I just want to talk just real briefly about the one question that came up about investment advisors and trying to figure out who's the investment advisor I should go with and how do I, I mean, our office really is a resource. I mean, and we always like to tell people, anytime you're looking at trying to invest your hard earned dollars, um, you really want to make sure you're investing that money um, with somebody who you trust. And so you want to make sure that that person is number one licensed here in the state of Montana. And they have to do that through this office. Okay, so you need to call us and make sure they're licensed, number one. And as uh, Terry pointed out, we have a database of every investment advi licensed investment advisor in this country. And we can tell you what they got on their test. We can tell you if they've had any actions taken against them. We can tell you a whole lot about that individual. So we're not going to tell you how to invest or who to invest with, but we certainly are a, a treasure trove of information so we are we are there to assist so now that uh, you've uh, worked really hard your whole life or at least a portion of your whole life and you've got this money um, you got to decide what to do with it as was pointed out and if you're going to invest your money you want to make sure that you protect yourself from investment fraud and you know, I can tell you that when I came into this office seven and a half years ago, um, I had no clue <laughs> just how many people were out there trying to take other people's hard-earned money. I mean, I knew there were some bad apples, but there's a lot more bad apples in the basket that I ever dreamed of. And in particular, they are really targeting the senior population out there. And as baby boomers are retiring, uh, that population is growing. And they actually, um, the baby boomers, once they hit that, you know, magic age, will, I mean, that's 75% of um, the income in this. I mean, they hold 75% of the country's wealth. And so that's huge. And that's why they are targeting seniors um, and folks who are, eight. so anyway, but even if you're not a senior or not about to become a senior, you still want to think about how to protect yourself from financial fraud. Because as I tell people, it doesn't matter what your age, how smart you are, what your background is in terms of education, it doesn't matter um, your um, experience in investing, each and every one of us can be taken in an investment fraud scam. And the reason is because 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a trust relationship that's built. And they take advantage of that trust, and they use that trust to take your money. And they're very good at it. So. Um, we're going to talk about that. I already told you what my role is at the office of CSI. We're there to assist you in terms of uh, research. And we obviously, when there is a case where somebody has um, actually um, perpetrated a financial fraud on individuals in Montana, we investigate, prosecute, and hopefully get restitution back. So what are some types of um, investment fraud um, schemes that are out there? Well, one of the most one that we see a lot of is something called a pyramid scheme. How many people have heard of a pyramid scheme? All right, you guys are awesome. That's really good. Well, obviously, a pyramid scheme is pretty simple. People get the opportunity to make money primarily by recruiting other people, right? That's how the money is made. Well, <laughs> we've had a number of those come through Montana. I remember one of the very first ones when I was in office was called high-tech marketing. And how I first found out about how tech marketing, it was before I even knew we were already investigating them. Um, my mother, or my mother or my brother, I can't remember which one it was, called me up and explained this great investment opportunity they, they were involved in. And they thought I should get involved in it. And I listened and I went, you know, I think that's a pyramid scheme. I, think you I don't think you want to be doing this. Oh, no, no, this is different. They told me it's different. I'm telling you. <laughs> and I said, no, nope, I think it's pyramid scheme. So I remember I ran downstairs to Lynn Egan, who's our Deputy Securities Commissioner, and I, I mentioned high-tech marketing. She went, oh, yeah, we're investigating them. <laughs> it's, it's looking like it's seriously a pyramid scheme. So the next thing, I, so I call my brother back, and I tell him, no, nope, it's a pyramid scheme. No, it can't be. I said, we're investigating them. You know, it's kind of like nobody ever listens to anybody in their family. Okay, so my brother got involved. The next thing, no, my mother got involved, even though I told her not to. And then my sister-in-law got involved. Three of my family members. And I was like, okay, well, you'll learn. So anyway, we uh, shut them down. <laughs> 
they actually signed up like 1,600 participants here in Montana. And uh, they each, each one of them had to pay about $300 to participate. And obviously they could only earn money by getting other folks on board. And we took our action and then they ended up having to return $960,000 back to participants who actually had not made money. Um, and uh, we made them pay a big fine as well, and they're no longer in Montana. So, <laughs> um, like I say, if you take a look at this, you'll see, if you look at, let me see, level six, which is hard to see with the lighting in here, but if you look at level six, uh, you actually would have to recruit something like 46,656 people just to get your money back. I mean, obviously, unless you're at the top, it don't work. <laughs> it is not a good thing. So, we also like to point out that there are things called multi-level marketing. I'm sure many of you have heard of that as well. Multi-level marketing companies are much different. They actually sell a product or a service. And uh, we have some, and they're legal in Montana, as long as they register with our office or they become a member of a direct selling association. But uh, examples would be like Avon, Tupperware, Pampered Chef, one of my favorites. And of course, Mary Kay, which has been around forever. So obviously the participant in a legitimate multi-level marketing company, the partic participant earns more than 50% of his or her income from actually sale of the legitimate product or service. So um, we like to make sure we're shutting those down. Obviously, the CSI, as I said, we take criminal action against those companies. Um, Zeke Rewards was another company that we took action against. About 1,000 Montanans per participated, lost over $3.5 million. Unfortunately, Funky Shark, a Bozeman-based pyramid scheme, um, they raised more than a million dollars in 10 days from investors from over 120 countries. This was an internet-based pyramid scheme. Um, unfortunately, we stopped it, and we were able to get all of their money back to them. So, beware. All right, another type of uh, scheme, um, promissory notes. A promissory note is uh, similar to a certificate of deposit. Uh, so you give the bank money, it gives you a note promising they're gonna pay you that money back, obviously with interest on some date certain. And a real promissory note is you know, it's insured by the FDIC, and there's little, ri very little risk, if any. Um, promissory notes are issued by someone, if they're issued by someone other than the bank, um, most likely they're probably fraudulent, and there's no insurance backing the promise if the issuer fails. So, very important to know that if you're approached. Um, promissory notes that are market, marketed broadly um, to individual investors often, as I said, turn out to be scams. Uh, legitimate corporate and other types of promissory notes really aren't usually sold to the general public, and that's us, okay? <laughs> Nobody's, nobody that's legitimately selling promissory notes is gonna knock on our door or call us on the phone, all right? <laughs> Remember that. Um, we have some examples here in Montana of some promissory note scams. There was Cornerstone. Uh, $15 million in losses, and which resulted in a federal sentence for a man named Robert Condon and his partner Keith Kovic. Uh, Richard Reynolds, another $5 million in losses, um, t in prison for 20 years. And Richard Brandt, uh, $2.1 million in losses. 16 seniors lost their life savings, and criminal charges have been filed. I mean, it just breaks your heart. You know, when you see somebody who worked hard their entire life, they're retired, they only have so much money. You know, they can't go back out and make that money again. And someone steals it from them. You know, it's not a good thing. So protect yourself from promissory note, as I said. There's a lot of risk in these. And uh, just hang up, shut your door, all right? <laughs> Next thing, Ponzi scheme. I gotta make sure I'm staying on time. <clears throat> I got 10 minutes, all right, Ponzi schemes. How many people have heard of a Ponzi scheme? Oh yes, you guys are really smart. Uh, named after Charles Ponzi, 1920s con, 
um, persuaded obviously thousands of people to invest in his complex uh, scheme involving postage stamps of all things. Uh, Ponzi schemes, they take your money, they say they're gonna invest it, you're gonna get a return on that investment. But here's the deal, they're actually using at least a portion of that money to pay previous investors and putting the rest in their pocket. So there really is no, no investment. There's no real product that you're investing in. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a bad deal. And what happens is that it collapses once they can no longer get new investors because it needs to be fed constantly with new investors in order to work. And what we have found is that when you have a down in economy, uh, that's when our phone starts ringing <laughs> because it's collapsing and people are starting to realize they've been you know, taken advantage of in one of these Ponzi schemes because they're not getting those uh, returns anymore. Those checks are not showing up. And they call the guy up that they invested through and they're like, oh, I'll get back to you. Oh, something happened. And then they quit answering the phone. Guess what? It was a Ponzi scheme. Bernie Madoff, probably one of the most uh, famous Ponzi scheme scammers that folks have always heard of. Um, we had $35 million um, that investors lost here in Montana through this gentleman. And he's in federal prison right now and he's been ordered to pay back 17 billion with a B dollars. I'm sure folks will never see that. Um, if you see this guy, I don't know if you can sell, he's got a chair over his head. This is Richard Reynolds. This is a courthouse, is it in Butte, Lynn? Yeah, it was in Butte. Um, <laughs> Bozeman, not Butte, Bozeman. He was uh, sentenced two years ago for a Ponzi scheme, um, more than $5.6 million. And uh, he's, in he's been sentenced to prison for 20 years. And we've had some others, Cornerstone Financial, Pat Davidson out of Billings. I don't know if you remember Pat, ran for governor. He's still in, he's still in jail. So you wanna make sure that you are being wise about investing in anything like that. Do your, do your homework, you know, call our office. Make sure that the individual is actually licensed, number one, yes. So, so what, was, what was the attractive investment for your family? What made it so attractive? Well, it's like anything else. I mean, people think that they're gonna make money easily and quickly, you know? So that's the key. That's the key. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That's exactly right. <laughs> Unsuitable investments, obviously, <clears throat> you know, I think it's really important. It was, it was briefly touched on. I mean, you just really want to make sure that you're investing in products that are suitable for you and your investment risk. Um, some people have more um, appetite for, you know, higher, higher risk Others have, you know, more appetite for lower risk. Usually the older we get, the less risk we want. But, you know, you wanna make sure that you're reviewing those on a regular basis with your investment advisor, financial advisor. One size doesn't fit all. And then there's exotic investments out there. I mean, there's all sorts of crazy things. Um, usually these always carry very high risk. Um, <clears throat> so you really wanna be careful about those. Um, exotic investments. I'm gonna give you an example of an exotic investment. Um, the financial collapse that occurred in 2008, um, there were some exotic investments that were going on there and they were some products, um, credit default swaps, uh, collateralized mortgage obligations, very, very complicated um, investments that if anybody actually understood what was in them, which nobody did, unfortunately not even Wall Street, um, the very few people that did were crooks, and the fact that people were continuing to sell them made them crooks as well in my mind. Um, those were exotic investments. And it literally, um, my advice to you is if you don't understand something, don't invest in it, you know? Invest in what you understand. Uh, I think Warren Buffett always says that, I don't buy anything I don't like and that I don't understand. So it's very good advice. <clears throat> and then, I already told you that. Make sure that when you're, after you've made investments, you know, you get that statement every month or every quarter that comes in the mail. Don't just toss it in the corner. <laughs> Don't let the dust just pile up on it. You know, you worked really hard. You know, stay involved in your investments. Understand what's happening with them. Open up your, uh, open up your statements. 
make sure that there's nothing unusual going on in there because I'm telling you, sometimes that's what happens as well. You might have a financial advisor who's making, uh, buying and selling without your approval. That's illegal. They make money every time they buy and sell. Um, and the more they can do, if they're buying and selling constantly without your approval, that's churning. They're making a lot of money doing that. So if you don't understand what's happening, on your statement, ask questions. If they're not answering your questions, go above their head. If they're not answering your questions, call us. <laughs> All right? Like I said, they make money doing that. And obviously there's natural resource scams as well, and I'll end with that one and then see if there's any more questions. Natural resource scams, especially in a state like Montana where you've got a lot of oil and gas development, um, gold, what have you. Um, folks will try to find like-minded individuals who think that they can get involved in some gold mine or some oil well, and they're going to make a ton of money. Beware. Be very aware. Uh, do your homework. Give us a call. All right? So any qu there's other things out there, but that gives you a kind of a broad, broad stroke of some of the investment scams. Any other questions? Great. Thank you.